everybody, and welcome to another episode of Messy and Co. I'm Ashley. I'm here with Gian. We said we'd be doing it every week, and by God, it is still within a week, and we are back. And uh, already, lots to talk about very quickly how things change and how things turn in this MLS offseason. How are you doing, first of all, Gian? How's your uh, week been? Uh, good, good, good. Glad to be back on. Uh, and as we promised, we are bringing you at least one episode a week as the news continues to come in. It's funny. We had an episode last week and within minutes, uh, breaking news came out. We three wanted, of the things we yeah, talked about were out the window. <laughs> exactly. And we want, we felt like we wanted to jump back on and, and yeah. talk about it. But uh, so that's what we're going to do this episode, kind of talk about what the developments have been since our last episode. And we're excited to see um, it looks like the wheels are turning now for Inter Miami. We're starting to see some movement. We had seen other clubs that had started to do things, and we were wondering what the heck is going on with Miami. So we've seen a couple of things now, and we're excited to talk about it. 100%. And with that being said, we can just get right into it with the big story, breaking news throughout the MLS, and certainly a surprise to me and Gian. Uh, Kamal Miller, Inter Miami defender and Canadian national team defender, has been traded to the Portland Timber to our previous head coach, Phil Neville, who helped bring in Kamal Miller. And uh, for 700 and I think up to $775,000 in allocated money and an international uh, roster slot. And we're going to get into sort of like, you know, what those things can mean and, you know, the money Inter Miami is playing with, the potential new signings. But I think it's first important to talk a little bit about just our initial reaction with the trade and, uh, you know, what we thought of Kamal Miller's time in Miami. Did we think it should have been maybe extended a little? Did we think, you know, we have to wait and see what we get out of it? But um, you want to start, Gian? Yeah, yeah. So I thought it was interesting because Kamal Miller had just gotten extended. So Usually when a player gets extended, you're like, okay, you know, I, I expected Kamal Miller to get uh, extended. We, it, it seems like the team showed faith in him. He had done a good job for us um, as, as he started. He did pretty well. He was, I would say, and maybe in a lot of the eyes of other, other fans, he was probably our top defender um, on that back uh, line other than – or then Alba, but Alba is obviously a bit more offensive. 100%. But yeah, the center back position, he did, a, I think, a solid job. I don't think, you know, he was uh, the best, one of the best in the league, but he was definitely, well, that might bring in some controversy. I think that there are people that think a bit more highly of him, but I think that he did a very solid job for us. He did show some signs of weakness in, in my eyes. There were times where he could would get dribbled passed very easily uh there were times where his speed became an issue or lack thereof so there were some mm -hmm. things where i you know i'm like okay they, there's i think a lot of us thought and probably even you shared the same opinion the center back position is probably one that we needed to an upgrade in but it just seemed again because of the extension that kamal miller was maybe the piece that was going to stay and maybe somebody was going to be brought in to be next to him but yeah, uh, Avila's taking the right back. We talked yeah, about that a little. E exactly. So I thought it was interesting, just the mixed signals by Inter Miami, but I think that's nothing new from our, our squad, the, the, the mixed signals that we get. So it'll be interesting to see what, what they do. Um, I've got some a, a few more thoughts on that. Like, um, you know what's interesting when we talk about Kamal Miller and him being traded? Think about some of the what, – what was one of the biggest issues, actually, that you can remember, I guess, in with our defense? Like, as um, if I'm not mistaken, we had a really big issue with our uh, set pieces, right? And one of the things that we'd have these giant center backs from these other teams come into the area and they'd um, head, our, yeah, they'd head over our, our players and, and and it'd be we couldn't we just suffered all season long. We centered uh, we suffered with that that set piece. And now when you look at some of the center backs that Miami has been linked to, like Victor Cuesta, yeah, he's 35 years old. He plays for Botafogo, but he's played very well. He started, I believe, in all of those games, and he's 6'2". Another guy that Miami's been linked to is Marco Rojo, who's also 6'2". So I don't know. Like we'll, we'll talk about it later on, who we think can come in, but it seems to me, you know, uh, Kamal Miller's six foot, so it seems to me like 
maybe Inter Miami is looking for a taller center back and maybe a bit more athletic. So, um, how tall is um, Thomas Avila? He seems tall. Tom, Thomas Avila is is tall. Actually, I'm not sure. Let's look that up because that's interesting to see how how tall he is. Well, while you're looking that up, though, I I'll go ahead and and start my part because I think you made a lot six of one. Good points. Six, six one. Yeah, yeah. But he feels taller than he felt much taller than because he's lanky. Than. That's why he's like all skinny yeah, and lanky. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, obviously, me and Austin famously had a nice discussion about oh, Kamal yeah. Miller and uh, <laughs> who the starting defenders were toward the end of last season. But um, I think that it's very difficult today to make a decision on if it was a good call or not. I think we need to not wait and see forever, but you know, see what our starting lineup looks like. You know, game one of the MLS season. Who is our back four? Because I I mean, unless something crazy happens, I imagine it'll be a back four, not a back five. Who are those four going to look like? Uh, who are Inter Miami going to get in the offseason based on now having more allocation money, more international roster spots, getting rid of, you know, and reorganizing some DP stuff? It'll be interesting to see. I will say, um, you know, all jokes aside with all the things that we've had, I thought, Kamala did a very good job this season. I think, especially towards the end when he was getting he was getting a little sloppy sometimes with the passes or got beat a few times. He played almost every minute of the season. He worked so hard, especially in our league's cup run. He was as you know, every game he showed up, he played 90 minutes. He played almost flawlessly. He really did. He played, I think he did an amazing job. And I'm sad to see him go because I think him and Aviles were starting to get a pretty good partnership going. Um, we obviously will see what's going on with our new defenders that we get or if we get any. But um, it, it was something, you know, I, 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 I wish him the best. And if we end up having better defense and better players for it, then that's great. But yeah. I have nothing against him. I think he did a very good job. And I couldn't honest. agree more with you in the sense of like right now, I can't get like I can't get angry at this trade. I can't say it was a bad trade or a good trade. I agree with you 100%. Until you see what replaces right. Kamal Miller, you you can't judge this yet. And it, it, to me, and everything you said, he did great for us in the League's Cup. He was solid. He was our probably our top defender other than than Alba and in that position. If you and he was young, 26 years old, if you whoever comes in his place has to be an upgrade has to be an upgrade has to be as a pure defender at least has yeah. to be an upgrade um look if if starting day one the back line is uh Aviles and alba which i expected to be no matter who's playing um and then it's also you know yedlin and christopher mcbay i probably won't be very happy but yeah. if it's if it's you know two others then we'll see we'll see and so you know with that being said i think that we both at the moment can't have too strong an opinion we'll see how it shakes out um but like i said i i wish him the best i think he was a very good servant of the team for a year um but you know what we can talk about is what has miami gotten out of this trade so far and as what we know of today um is that they have up to seven hundred and seventy five thousand dollars in allocation spending and an international roster spot um and now i don't have it off the top of my head but i know that I believe there are a few other players that we we got some allocation money for that we haven't spent yet. Um, and so I think that our tally is a little bit higher than that. Um, and that international roster spot is huge, especially with all of the um, discussions we've had with different Brazilian and Argentina, Argentine teams, right, about who's available and doing some pickups and, you know, being able to have those international roster spots available. Uh, and so, you know, they have to make some noise with it. You may, you mentioned uh, Victor Cuesta earlier from uh, Botafogo. And sorry, I'm, I like haven't spoken Spanish or said Spanish. Yeah, that was actually really while. good. You pronounced so, that perfectly. Okay, Botafogo. Okay, good. Yeah. So, not as much as when we were doing this podcast. Yeah, yeah. So we, we do better <laughs> with it. <laughs> I think it's interesting, though, like as far as the international roster spot and allocation money, because, and, and then obviously this, everything revolving around Kamal Miller being extended and then traded away. It's it's like it almost seems to me that 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 trade getting in an international roster spot and getting an allocation money, and this is only a guess, but it could maybe be that it's to 
that's what they need to bring in maybe Luis Suarez. Yeah, maybe no, or, or it could be for another player. Like this might not have anything to do with swapping getting someone was, new, right? Getting someone new in in the in, uh, for defense. Like it could be that they were very happy with him, and he was almost like he was a, he was sacrificed for some bringing in again a, a player like Suarez or maybe another international uh, player that would will be in the midfield or or up front. Um, we're yet to see what that is or what ends up happening, but I, I don't know if this is necessarily something that they wanted to do because they felt like they needed an they had a natural defender. To take yeah. Place. Yeah. Cause that would be interesting if, if maybe we have somebody that's maybe not as good as Miller. And I, and I think that that would open our eyes and say, yeah, that's what they did. They ended up sacrificing uh, Kamal, unfortunately, to bring in somebody that they really wanted, um, you know, midfield or, or the front or forward. Hundred percent. I mean, we were talking about Julian Gressel, who's an option, who is gonna, you know, it's gonna cost a pretty penny. He just won uh, the MLS Cup, and yeah. he is a very good midfielder, very good player. Uh, you know, if if they do end up going for Victor Cuesta, it could be a swap deal because obviously they're interested in Gregory, and yeah. you know, it could be that plus a little bit of money. You don't know, so uh, you know, it'll be interesting to say, but. To your point a little bit, maybe, you know, there are, I don't know what's going to happen with DeAndre Yedlin, um, but let's just say for the sake of this, uh, you know, for this conversation, he's not here for day one, right? And he's he's gone. Um, obviously, Jordi Alba will be on the left, but there's a couple names of people who could be in that middle and that right back position. You know, obviously, we're going to have uh, Aviles. Uh, but, you know, Ian Frey, I'm not sure how close he is to coming back from his ACL. Maybe he wouldn't be available day one. But for people who saw, obviously, Messi famously gave a shout out to him after the after his uh, debut. But Ian Frey was playing fantastic before Messi got there and before his injury. Poor guy has had very bad injury luck, but he was playing really good. I think he was doing a little bit of left back, a little bit of right back, even a little bit of midfield. And he's a baller like he really is. Yeah. You know? good player um ryan sailor someone i talked about also towards the end of last season where i was like mm, it's interesting we haven't gotten i think you know the best out of him he hasn't been able to have super super consistent minutes in his rookie season because of injuries and things like that he was thrust into a bunch of games and he did well especially as a rookie and so yeah with some time with tata martina i could see him being in there um i could see situations where you know they put they have mcveigh they have sailor they have uh you know, uh, Christoph, they have Aviles, and they kind of mix and match to have either a back three or a back four that that works. I mean, I definitely would like us to get more re mi uh, defensive reinforcements, but like I said, maybe you're right. Maybe they're investing in those big midfield and forward players, and they have belief in their guys. I mean, you also you have um, Noah Allen, who played fantastic last season when he had to. You have, uh, you know, you have Alba who can move around if needed. You can shift some guys around. And, uh, you know, Noah Allen played uh, center back a couple games, remember? Yeah, he did. Yep, yep. He had to play left center back. So, I mean, maybe there's a day where you're starting, you know, you're starting four defenders is uh, Alba, Noah Allen, Ryan Saylor slash Chris McVeigh slash Christoph, one of those, and, and Thomas Aviles on the right. Like, you know, that could be something they go with in the beginning. Who knows? Yeah, no, 100%. I think that they've got options there. But I, I still I still think that they have to upgrade. They have to upgrade in defense. I mean, they've got players that I think are good enough to fill in for short periods of time, whether it's yeah. just like an in-game sub, in the you know, whether it's an injury or it's just an in-game sub to kind of get some fresh legs in the with like 25 to 30 minutes left in the second half. They've got those players. Um, they're, they're, they're set at left back, obviously, with, with Alba. They're set with Aviles. I think that that's a guy that they, they have a lot of trust in and that they're kind of um, – hedging their future on is is bringing him up and uh giving him a really strong starting role and a lot of minutes the right back position is something that i think is going to be i, I mean what i don't know negri I, negri yeah franco negri but he played on the left i don't know if he plays no on no, the no he's right back he's right back oh shoot yeah you're right sorry i got confused yeah so franco i i feel like honestly 
I would take Negri over Yedlin. Um, 100%. Unfo- uh, yeah, unfortunately, Yedlin, I think, like last year, he, I didn't like a lot of what he did. Um, he's a guy that doesn't get back when yeah. he needs to. And unfortunately, put the defense more, and, and mainly the center backs in a lot of precarious positions that led to to goals. You know, he's a guy that likes to go up forward and, and center and that sort of thing. But in this day and age, if you're going to do that, you need to make sure that you can get back, that you have the legs to do that. And that's something that uh, DeAndre showed that he can't do anymore or or maybe has decided not to. So I definitely think that, that that's where an upgrade is, is needed. So you reminded me. Yeah, maybe, maybe, he is left. maybe he is left. You may be right. But still, regardless, we have options is the point. Yeah. Yeah. So, but on the right, I think definitely that needs to be upgraded. Uh, somebody that comes to mind for me is somebody like Sergi Roberto, who's already been linked with uh, Inter Miami. That's a guy that um, is a seasoned vet, still plays for Barca, doesn't get a lot of minutes in Barcelona, really. Um, but they keep him there because they know that when he needs to be called upon, that he's going to show up and he's a professional he they they talk great about him in barcelona again for sometimes that ends up happening when you have guys that don't get a lot of minutes they tend to get disconnected from the team and they become an issue and that sort of thing but this guy has been a a big time professional so i think that that would be great on the at the right back position but um yeah i think that's definitely one area that will get uh, upgraded and then hopefully that center back position i i honestly don't want to see a lineup if we can avoid it of Ailes and Christoph, like that's Christoph is a, a, a solid guy, but he's just not a starter in my eyes. He he started games for us, but age comes right. into it and and that sort of thing. So um, I think that one thing that was interesting to me, and I like when I saw that Miles Robinson went to um, Cincinnati, right? He went to Cincinnati. Like mm-hmm. that's a guy that I thought could have like gone in as a center back and that's a guy that Tata Martino had on his team in Atlanta United so I'm surprised like that was like well, I was, think money play he got a big he got a big payout yeah but that would have been excellent yeah. like yeah <laughs> but yeah. that would have been I mean, an also, excellent option. you know we may very well see that you know both Christopher McVeigh and Tomas Aviles have a lot of experience playing right back a lot and yeah. While maybe in a perfect world they're center backs, if Inter Miami can only really if they can only get one or the other, where it's a center back or it's a right back, I think they're what probably going to lean towards center back. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, if you have because any, I mean, I don't want to say anyone could play right back because that's not what I mean. <laughs> but mo- any right footed defender, like can I can fit into it better than like left back is difficult. You need to be left footed. You need to be able to you know have really good crossing ability. And while that's also important for right back, like, you know, we could see some inverted fullback play or, you know, having maybe like a three, five, two scenario where we even have, um, if Robert Taylor stays, he could play right, which I would hate. I was, I was going to ask you that. Are we going to see Robert Taylor like at right back? <laughs> I would not like it. But my point is, is that I think that center back is where we struggled the most. And that I would rather see that where we know we have a couple of players who, if they have to play right back, they can um, and go from there. I, yeah, I think having Gregory, if he if he ends up still being on the team, I think that that's going to help the defense tremendously as well. Totally. Um, ha- when you have, you know, not to, um, you know, say anything about my fellow Ecuadorian, um, but uh, Arroyo, he did great. He did great, but... Gregory is an upgrade, and when you've got Gregory and Busquets there in the midfield, I think that's going to take a lot of pressure off of of the defense. So maybe maybe you're able to still roll, you know, with um, oh, what's his face on the right back? Sorry, I just got like a, a mental. Um, Thomas Aviles or Chris Bay? No, no. Um, Yedlin. Yedlin. Sorry. Yeah. Thank oh. you. <laughs> I think that maybe you can that that will kind of be like a buffer for for Yedlin if we have yeah. Gregory still in like that'll definitely help a lot but um that's I mean that's something that's well known Miami has struggled in defense and I, I think that that is the main area like you've got the, the the front line you've got it taken care of especially with Suarez I think you need no upgrades up there you are perfect 
then if you stay with with uh, Busquets and and Gregory, that's going to help our defense tremendously, tremendously, tremendously. If you've got those two starting, and then obviously you can play on the wings. But other than that, man, yeah, the focus now with this allocation money, with the roster spot, if it's not to for another player that they're trying to bring in, possibly Suarez. If it's I don't, again, like right. MLS is MLS is not transparent with this stuff, so sometimes it's kind of tough to figure out how many roster spots we've got international, all that. But if it's not for that, man, I really hope it's the center back position. I gotta agree with you. Like, there's you've got and enough right now, with, and also yeah. someone who we permanently lost was Leandro Gonzalez Perez. Yeah, that's a good point as well. We thought that he might end up um, staying yeah. with us, but re replay ended up buying the remainder of his of his pass. I, I think it was like thirty or forty percent, something like that. And because you know him and him and uh, an obvious would have been an interesting center back. It would have been probably a little too reckless of a center back duo, but it would have been interesting. Hey, but that would have been physicality. Like that would have been that would have been. But good. you know, even just saying that and reminding myself, looking at the list. I can't imagine a world where um, our GM, who I just blanked on his name, who's our GM, Chris our G- our Henderson, Chris Henderson, would willingly get rid of Kamal Miller and Leandro Gonzalez Perez and have no plan of a replacement ready to go. Like I do find that to be like I think if they were getting rid of Kamal Miller, then they would and and didn't have any other plan. Maybe they would recall. LGP to be back as a starting center back, but because of both happening at the same time, leads me to believe that he has something cooking. We'll see. But- yeah, no, I also feel like they probably couldn't do that. I think I think that that contract had a a, a team option for Rivet. So I don't know if they ha- so, I think- right they but they probably waited to like because that happened before this trade. So yeah. they you know they knew that was going to happen. It'll be interesting to see. It will be very interesting to see. Um, you know, obviously, Christian Medina, that hasn't also been yet uh, completely finalized. I know Rojo is looking like maybe a little bit less likely than more likely. Yeah. Um, but you don't know until you know. Obviously, like I said, with Botaf- Botafogo, we Perfect. are still waiting to see um, if they do end up wanting Gregory, if that ends up being some type of swap deal for um, Cuesta, if. If we're seeing Julian Gressel, if we're, yeah, you know, there's a I don't lot know if I'd options. want to do that though. I don't know if I'd want to do that swap. Like, is that Here. something that you would feel comfortable with swapping out Gregory for Cuesta? If we uh, get if we're if we're getting a big mid, like if we get Gressel or if we get another, you know, Medina, if we get either of those, like if we're getting, you have to have that lined up though. Yeah, like that would have to. Yeah, line but up. I, again, I think Chris Henderson does. Like, I think Chris Henderson is no fool, and obviously. You know, the first half of last season stuff, we could, you know, when they had the sanctions, when they were, you know, not playing great ball, it was very easy to say what's happening, what's happening. Um, but within 10 minutes, he got Messi, Busquets, and Alba. And then 20 minutes later, he got Luis Suarez. So I can't think he's not doing like I think he knows yeah. what he's doing. And so yeah, I I'd feel- have faith in him for sure. I mean, he did, you know, under difficult circumstances, he was able to do some good things. And now I think is the first season where he can actually have flexibility and be able to not have his kind of hands tied behind his back. So I mean, yeah, if great he- young talent. We have great yeah. young talent. We have Kramoski. Yeah. Obviously we ha- I mean we have uh oh you know Diego Gomez could play as a as also that defensive midfielder he hasn't he didn't do a very good job of it last season but that is what he's supposed to be trained to do so it'll put it this way we we're not going to discuss every single potential option today I think though what we are learning very quickly is that things are moving at a rapid pace for Inter Miami and um, people are leaving and people are coming in Big names on both sides. Uh, we have a good. We have a little bit of money to play with. Who knows? Maybe it's going to be for Luis Suarez. Maybe it's going to be for a swap deal. Maybe it's going to be for Gressel. Maybe it's going to be for Cuesta. Maybe it's going to be for someone we don't even know. Um, yeah. But it has our attention, and it will be very interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent agree. It's. Uh, I mean, it's it's always fun to I think just uh, you know guess and see who you want to come in who you don't want to come in but the good thing is to your point we've got we've got roster spots we've got money we've got dp spot like we have the tools and the instruments needed to be able to get to build around our core three um in alba messi and uh, Busquets and now actually maybe even a squad is core four four. so we've got enough to build around that and 
Like Avilas, the- even I would say, is a guarantee to play. So, you know, you have yeah. Challenger. Now you're starting to see, like, now we have six or seven people who are 1,000% going to be starting this game. So now it's what about those other four? Who are you mixing yeah. and matching? Who who has uh, Tata Martino been working with all off season and in the preseason that maybe is young or who didn't play last year or is coming back for a minute injury? Maybe there's people in-house who he thinks can do it. So we'll see. Yeah, yeah. We've got a lot of options. Um, a lot of options. We're going to try to build uh, probably two competitive teams here because of the amount of tournaments and and yeah. the amount of games we're going to be playing. So, yeah, it's definitely exciting. And uh, I feel like as soon as we end this episode, we'll get a breaking yeah, news. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nine, in 20 <laughs> minutes, we're going to be able to see who our next defender is going to be. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like last time. Uh, so, um, yeah, I mean, we'll definitely... Keep up to to date. If we have to do a breaking episode, we'll try to do a breaking episode. If not, we'll definitely be back next week. Um, And we're excited to keep uh, pumping out these episodes. And I'm sure that for next week, if we don't do one in between uh, now and and next week, uh, I'm sure we're going to have probably, uh, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, we have one or two two names to to, uh, talk about. So, yeah. Yeah, it'll be be exciting. And also maybe what we can do, and we can obviously talk about it, but... Um, by next week's episode, if we don't have any huge breaking news, which I'm sure we will, but if we don't, then maybe what we can each do is a little bit of our homework is go through who we would want to see as those ideal defense of either players we have or yeah. players we want to pick up that we don't know yet. Cause obviously this was breaking news over the last 24 hours that we weren't expecting. Uh, and so we're kind of working our minds through it. Like everyone else, we're remembering who's in our squad, who's available, who's leaving, who's staying. All that good stuff. So, um, but let us know in the comments or tweet us at Messi and Co. Uh, let us know what you think about this Kamal Miller trade. Let us know who you think Inter Miami should pick up, and who you think is going to be in that starting defense. Uh, d- defense on game one. Tell you what, I, this is still practice for us too. But, you know, the players are going to be running suicides. We're going to have to do some some talking <laughs> classes to remember how to do this. But uh, thank you guys for watching or for listening. Thank you, Gian, for being here. We will be back next week. Um, You may see some more familiar faces back with us, which will be exciting. Even more conversations happening. Uh, But for now, I'm Ashley. Uh, Thank you so much for watching slash listening to Messi and Co. Brought to you by Five Reasons Sports. And we will see you next week. Bye, everybody.